Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We are raising awareness on technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is center stage. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. And we are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumukuhua Theater. Uh, it is my absolute pleasure to have as my guest today, Victoria Nalani Nubel, who is one of the playwrights of the upcoming show at Kumukuhua Theater called Kaiulani. We're going to get to Victoria in just a moment. First, I do want to tell you that if you would ever like to be a guest in our studio here at ThinkTech, you just email J, spell it out, J-A-Y, at thinktechhawaii.com. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Vicky Nalani Nubo. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much for being here. I admire your work, and it, it's, uh, it's an honor to have you here. Oh, thank you. It's great to be here with you, Donna. <laughs> Good. I, um, your show, Ka the show that you are one of four playwrights on, right. Kaiolani, is opening at Kumukuhui Theater tomorrow, the 26th, make sure I say this right, the 26th of March, and will run through April 26th. And if people are interested in tickets, they should go to kumukuhui.org. Um, this show originally premiered at Kumukuhu almost 30 years ago. Almost 30 years ago, right. It's quite a ride. Yeah, it's, you know, I, I couldn't believe it was that long, that a long ago, of course, nobody wants to believe that much time has gone by, <laughs> but yes, um, it opened in March of 1987. I was still a graduate student. Um, I think we had started working on it in the fall of 1986, and someone, um, Bob Nelson, had submitted this libretto for an operetta about Kaiulani to Kumukahua. I'm not sure if it was part of the contest or if he just submitted it independently, but Dennis Carroll, who was then the artistic director of Kumukahua, and, and um, my drama professor and mentor <laughs> at the University of Hawaii, was really taken with um, the idea of doing a theater piece on Kaiulani. So <clears throat> he talked it over with Bob Nelson and then he called myself and Ryan Page, who was uh, one of my fellow students. Dennis was really our mentor, and you know he um, he was really good to me and Ryan. And he called us into his office and he asked us if we wanted to work on this project. And of course we were thrilled to be uh, working with Dennis and to be um, doing the project. And Bob Nelson, bless his heart, took a real leap of faith, <laughs> um, allowing us to. Um, have at his libretto <laughs> and turn oh. it into a theater piece. And um, so Dennis actually um, had a directorial vision of what he wanted to do. And he talked to Ryan and I about that before we started writing the scenes. So we, we knew what he had in mind. And so we divided up the, um, some of the scenes, and we, Ryan and I started working, and Dennis started working, and then Dennis actually um, put it together, you know. I didn't realize that. You wrote the scenes separately. Yeah. Oh. I mean, we knew the story, you yeah. know, and because we, we had all read the libretto. Um, so a lot of the scenes really followed the events that Bob had laid out in the libretto, but then, but then we added some things too, and um, edited some other things, and shifted things around. And Let me ask you this, there's a Greek chorus, a Hawaiian mm -hmm. chorus in the show. Was that a part of the libretto, or is that a part of Dennis Carroll? I think, I think it was a part of Dennis Carroll. And I, you know, I had had, previous to working on this script, I had had one one-act play produced in the Lab Theater at the university. And then my first full-length play, Emma Lehua, um, was produced by Kumukahua. And we had a chorus in that, in, the, in Emma Lehua. We had a, um, a chorus that moved, you know, through, throughout the play. So, um, you know, and Dennis actually was, was my teacher when I was writing that play too, so I'm not sure. I, I'm hoping that my chorus inspired, inspired his, <laughs> but I don't know. <laughs> well, it's a construct that is not 
it's not used terribly often anymore, yeah. but uh, is so utilitarian. Yes. Yeah, they, they set up scene and, and are uh, people within a scene or um, uh, scenery yeah. sometimes. Well, you know, one of the things about being um, Dennis's playwriting student and his theater student is that it, if you're in one, if you were in one of his classes at that time, it became it would become apparent to you really quickly that he loved um, stagecraft, artistry, poetry. Um, he's he he's extremely good at stage composition, moving bodies around the stage. Those are some of his real strengths, and so. I can see how he would be naturally drawn to that kind of theatrical convention because it lends itself so well to, um, you know, poetry, actors doing multiple roles, <clears throat> all of those kinds of things. Yes. He, he loved European theater. Yeah, you know, so. that collaborative, yeah. everybody moving the story forward. And I think maybe it... Um, pushes the willing suspense of disbelief a little, pushes the ticket a little bit further. Yeah. yeah. It's really theater as an art form. That's how I, that's how I look at the way he taught us. Mm. You know, theater is an art form. Not, I mean, it's wonderful if it's entertaining too, but it's, it's really, a, it's like painting or dancing or. Yeah, it should move you. Yeah. Not just, and there's room for everybody on That's the landscape. Right. That's there, there's, right. I love a good song and dance. I got my beginnings come from musical theater. Yeah. But, and there is this other type of theater that yes. is not there to entertain. It's there to stir. Yeah. And cut you Lenny, um, as a script, it has such an unusual structure to it. You know, which is um, something that I, I loved being part of. I mean, I mean, I have written, you know, with the well-made play structure, but um, I find that that kind of unusual structure that leaves you open to to all kinds of different things and different voices is really um, it's so it, it leaves so much room for your imagination. You okay. know? Let's talk about the actual structure of it, can we? Okay. I mean, most we're, we're not giving too much away because most people know yeah. the story of. Money yeah. to begin with. So yes. Would you talk about the structure? Well, um, as I said, it began from a libretto. So um, there is, there are, I think, three or four monologues spaced out um, in the in the play. There is a chorus. Um, there are different women who are playing the role of Kaiulani throughout. Um, the story of her life. There's a young woman, and then and then there's a split Kaiulani, and the so yeah. There's there's two actresses, yes, one yeah. playing Victoria, more of the European yes. Kai, because she was of combined yeah, descent. Yes. Um, one pay, playing the more European, and the yes. other the Hawaiian young lady. That's right. And so the um, the play moves through different events in her life really um, quickly. It's not like uh, a play where there are really recognizable scene breaks. It's one scene flows into another, and sometimes the chorus, um, you know, comes on and takes on different roles in the, in, in the play and in each particular scene. So it's quite, um, it's unusual. It was unusual for its time, and, uh, you know, as I watched the rehearsal of it, it's still, it's still lovely and unusual. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. good. And yeah. In, it's directed by Harry Wong, our yes. artistic director. Yes. Harry has, uh, Harry doesn't like to do anything you've seen before. Yeah. You know, he'll yes. do it differently. And yeah. he has, a, he has such, uh, he just has such an uh, innate knowledge of flow that I, I think yeah. really shows in his pieces. Harry was, um, I think he was a stage manager for a while for the original productions, but he, he was around, um, you know, when we were doing uh, the first Cut You Lenny, and he actually came to Edinburgh with us 
when we took Cut Yulani to um, the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. So he, you know, he was, he is extremely familiar with Dennis's production. And I, you know, I, of course, I wouldn't expect him to do what Dennis did. You know, I, Harry has, Harry is his own director. Yeah. <laughs> and so he, um, he has done quite a lovely production too. Is it very different? Um, it is different. And some things are different, and some things I really recognize as um, not exactly the same. But uh, it might be because I'm a writer, but they have the same resonance for me that they did 30 years ago, which really surprised me. You know, I oh, nice. hadn't seen you know I hadn't seen the play for almost 30 years, and so to recognize things that you wrote 30 years ago and realize that yeah you know that was that was something i was really feeling <laughs> and and was is still really important to me yeah. so oh that's awesome yeah that was so you, you just saw one of the rehearsals last yes, night yes i did i saw that. it last night and some of the cast mm -hmm. is just you know wonderful oh awesome yeah i i do have to wonder uh, like when we were doing uh, My Name is Gary Cooper, mm -hmm. the playwright Victor Roger was not on the island, so yeah. he couldn't come in and see any of the rehearsals. Some of our playwrights are right there. Yeah. And you're here. You could have come in. Were you tempted to come during um, the process? I was, but you know, I've been really sick for the last three weeks. And so I've been doing some things I have to do, but I, I've been trying not to do um, too much. Oh, okay, so, so that you might have come I in. I might have yeah. come in more, yeah. I think that would be difficult. Like like, like I, I mentioned, that playwriting is never going to be a talent of mine, but I almost feel, I, I know it would be difficult for me as a playwright to stay away from the process. Oh, to let go. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you have to learn that um, really early. I mean, some directors will work really, really closely with you and will want you to be there all the time and will want your input and, mm -hmm. you know, um, and some directors really prefer to work independently. They feel like you have done your job and, and now they want to do theirs. And you just have to learn to work with both kinds of directors and you have to learn to trust hopefully, that, um, you know, people that you give your work to are going to do their very best. Yeah. Most of the time, it's been okay for me. There's a couple times, not so good, but <laughs> they weren't here. <laughs> I, oh, good. <laughs> they certainly didn't have it at Kumiko. No, theater. they did not. <laughs> um, I, as an actor, part of what I love about the job as an actor is that it, it, it's happening in this moment, and there's, there are no regrets. You know, yeah. you, you cannot have regrets. You, you may yeah. tweak something for the show tomorrow night, but eventually that show is going to close and you're done. You know, you wash your yeah. hands. And when I started, when I started working in theater management, it, it's difficult to be on stage when you're managing the theater yeah. during the day. So I got away from it for a while and found that I needed to express myself somehow. So I started painting. And Victoria, I have paintings on my wall that I will still pull down and I'll check. Oh, I do. I think there's a little more red <laughs> right here. You know, it's not like theater. It's done. You can't have those regrets. Paintings, yeah. you keep tweaking. And that's what I think of when I think of a playwright watching a rehearsal almost 30 years later. I, um, I wonder if there is anything inside of you that says, oh, I could have done that differently. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, I think it would be different if it was 30 years later and I was watching something I wrote all by myself. Mm. But because this was written in a group, um, there, there were some things that I would have changed, but I didn't write them originally. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, I would feel weird about doing that. But I, I think one of the things that I really recognized after I read the script too, before I came to the rehearsal, oh. is that, you know, in 1987, we did not have all of the wonderful Hawaiian scholarship that we now have about that time period. So when we were interpreting those events of, um, you know, 1893, annexation, all of those things, we, um, we just didn't have the 
all of the wonderful information, all of this great scholarship, all of these new discoveries that we have today. So yeah. I think, you know, if we, um, if we were writing this today, we might include some other things that, um, you know, that we just didn't know about them. Yeah, because it was yeah. understood. We're, yeah. we're going to go to a quick break. I want to come right back to that topic, though. Okay. Okay. Uh, we will be back in just a moment. Please stay with us. I'm Donna Blanchard with Center Stage, and I'm talking with Victoria Nalani Nubal. We'll be right back. Inspired by an ancient culture, classical Chinese dance, vigorous physicality, timeless stories, 5,000 years of Chinese music and dance. Shen Yun presents authentic Chinese culture. Coming to Blaisdell Concert Hall, May 8th and 9th. Tickets at ShenYun.com or call 808-792-3919. Hi, my name is Andrew Howard. I'm an astronomer at the Institute for Astronomy at the University of Hawaii up in Manoa. I'd like to tell you about the annual open house that we're having this year. It is on April 6th. 11 to uh, 4 p.m. It's an all-ages event, kids, grown-ups, even uh, people in between, everyone is welcome. We have a lot of uh, really fun activities. You get to meet astronomers, look at yourself in an infrared camera, play with Legos, make robots, look at videos. Um, you can even make it, some of the kids like to make comets out of uh, gravel and, and, uh, and snow. Even adults like to do that, too. You'll be able to look at the sun with a solar camera uh, safely. It's really a great activity. We do this every year um, in April, and I hope uh, to see you this year. Thanks. Hi, we're back and we're live. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Series. We here at Think Tech broadcast shows from noon to five every weekday. You can catch us on uh, thinktechhawaii.com. You can also watch the shows later if you'd like to catch them again on YouTube, and they're all archived on thinktechhawaii.com as well. I am talking today with Victoria Nalani Noble, my guest, who is one of four playwrights of the show, Ka'iulani, which opens at Kumukuhua Theater tomorrow night and runs through April 26th. So let's go right back where we were in the, in the conversation. Um, uh, we were talking about uh, um, where the script was almost 30 years ago, where, okay. where we were. I was shocked when I looked at the script and I, I read Kaiolani and everybody was saying Kaiolani. I didn't know anything about the princess yeah. from Indiana. Uh -huh. um, and I, I wrote a, a very early press release, and um, uh, one of my friends uh, proofread it for me, and she said, oh, you have to put that Okina in there. And I yeah. said, I'm looking at the script. And it's, <laughs> I just took it out of the script. And so I called Dennis Carroll and said, what's your intention here? And I didn't realize that it was that recent that the diacritical marks were not used. Well, I think they were, you know, they weren't on the computer and they yeah. weren't on the typewriter. So we couldn't use them. You just couldn't, yeah. Yeah. That, uh, I, to me, that, um, that just made me take a step back and think, wow, this is, you, you, it, yeah. it was a very different world for yeah, people of Hawaiian descent 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. That brought it all yes. home for me. Yeah. Um, have you thought at all about what, uh, it, would the show have gone in a different direction if you were writing it now? Well, like I said, you know, because now, 30 years later, I've written so many plays by myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I were writing it by myself, um, yeah, it, it probably would go in a different direction. I mean, after, um, at somewhere uh, along the line shortly after I uh, worked with Dennis and Ryan and Bob and Ka'ilani, I was introduced to feminist theater. And I really liked some of the feminist playwrights I was reading, especially the ones from, you know, England, Carol Churchill and Louise Page and all of those. It was just so fresh and so um, alive to me, their writing. And so, I, um, a lot of my subsequent plays have been um, about women and 
have been, you know, have feminist themes, I hope, <laughs> in them. And so I think um, if I were going to write about her by myself today, it probably would be different. Yeah. But, but I don't want to give you the impression that that production was really important to me for, um, for a lot of other reasons, you know. It was, it was one of the first plays that actually dealt with um, that historical information about the overthrow of the monarchy, about annexation and how it affected, you know, the Hawaiian community and uh, especially the ali'i. I think the only other play before that that touched on that kind of material was John Dominus Holt's play, Kaula Nanapua. Um, so that was really exciting to be, for me, someone of Hawaiian ancestry, to be working on a play like that, um, you know, so early in my career and being able to give it to the community. Mm. We, um, you know, we took that play to a lot of different places. And the one performance that really stands out in my mind is um, the one that we did in Hana Maui which is, you know, it's a small community on Maui, and, and you know, it's the 1980s, right? <laughs> so we're in this old wooden community center on the bay, and it was, it was very charming, but it was funky, mm. and there was no, you know, really decent theater light, so I think somebody rigged up these spotlights, and, and, and um, I didn't think anybody was going to show up, you know, because of where, here we are. It, I, Right before the play started, that auditorium was full. Mm -hmm. People are sitting on benches and folding chairs, and you know. So, so um, the women, you know, and the men, the actors did the play, and I was sitting uh, pretty close to Dennis. And when the play ended, it was like, totally quiet, and I, I mean, it was quiet for kind of longer than it should be. And I looked at Dennis, and I thought I could tell he was thinking the same thing. Oh my God! I wonder if they hated it. And then all of a sudden, that room just, everybody jumped up at once oh. and started crying and clapping. That's amazing. I just get chills. Yeah, it was really amazing. And I, um, sorry, I feel a little bit emotional every time I remember that. Uh, because <clears throat> most of the people in the room were Native Hawaiians. And it was just... It was one of those moments, you know, one of those theater moments. You did give them something. Yeah. You did give them something that they hadn't seen before. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was, it was pretty um, great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Th theater of place is a passion of mine. That, uh -huh. That's why I came here. Um, uh -huh. uh, it, 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 it's so important. It, it's so important to who we are and, and to where we are. Yeah. And it, it is a gift in so many ways. But to have that and to have that for a community of people for whom theater, the, the theater construct uh, that we're talking about is not a native Hawaiian form of art. No. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's, but to be able to offer it within that conduit, here is how we see you. We, uh, Here's your story through this construct. Yeah, I think is is a is a gift to give. You're giving the gift of theater, yeah. really, of that that type of theater. Yeah. Well, I I hope so, and I I think that that experience and that play really um, brought home to me how important it is for us to tell our stories, because. Native Hawaiians, other Pacific Islanders, we don't see ourselves represented in the world. And sometimes when we do, it's in really pretty bizarre ways. <laughs> so it's really um, important and valuable for us to tell our own stories through theater or whatever um, you know, medium we, we find ourselves in. And I, um, I, I'm so happy that 30 years later, there's so much more of that in our community. Mm. You know, when we first did my first full-length play at Kumukahua, we had to call people up on the phone and beg them to come and audition or take a part. And, oh. You know, it's not like that anymore. I mean, mm. you, you put a call out for auditions and people show up, 
lots of people sometimes and there's so many more people participating in telling our stories now. Yeah. yeah that's great. It, yeah, people recognize the value of it more yeah. and more. And yes. we have, you know, we don't, at Kumukuhua, we really don't get a lot of visitors to the island coming to the theater. And part of the reason is, you know, there are people who save for 10 years for a trip to Hawaii. Yeah. And they're not doing that so they can sit in a dark theater yeah. at night. You know, they want the moonlight and the and beach, the beach. And the ukulele <laughs> sound in the background, yeah. and that's cool. I get that. Yes. Um, w but we do get, uh, uh, occasionally, we will have people coming in to just about every production. We'll have a few people who come to the island, and they call up and they say, I heard about you. That's great. And I want to see local theater while I'm here. And yeah. they understand that they are going to get a taste of this island a very important taste in a different yeah. way when they come see this sort of theater. And like I said, there's room for all of us on the landscape, the, the theatrical yeah. landscape, but you just can't beat what we're, <laughs> what yeah. we're serving up the Kumakua. That's right. And you yeah. know, the theater has been there for so long now. It's just, you know, it's really, people don't realize that Kumukahua, which is a theater that reflects the community that it that it exists in and the you know the people it reflects the people in that community too there's just there, i mean what other kind of theater is there like that in the nation that's been around for that long none yeah and i can tell you because i looked yeah I, when i when i first fell in love with this idea i found a lot of people who are sort of like gypsies who move around they go into a town they gather stories and yeah write a thea theatrical piece, but to find a brick and mortar theater, yes. uh, especially a community theater, and it's, I think it's important that it's a community theater. That's right. Yeah, I didn't find it on the mainland. Yeah. I had to come 5,000 miles yeah. for it. You know, I've been to a few theater conferences um, on the continent and um, in connection with this uh, Native American Women's Playwriting Archive. and. I remember at one of the conferences they were talking about how wonderful this theater was that had been there for 10 years that was doing Native American things. And I thought, whoa, <laughs> you know, that's, <laughs> ten years. that 10 years is nothing compared to how long Kumukahua has been in, been part of the community. Yeah. And, yeah. so. and we have some subscribers who have been with the theater for almost all of the 44 years. Wow, that's great. Yeah. And Dennis Carroll, one of the founding members, yeah. is still an yeah. active member of the theater. Yes. Yeah. So can we, um, I'd like to talk about some of your other work. Just, mm -hmm. I, I, it, it informs the conversation about uh, Kaiolani. You have, my first experience with you was um, the annexation debate. Oh. You have these three plays that you've written that take theater uh -huh. of place a step further and yeah. they actually, they are performed in the, in the courthouse, on the palace grounds. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about how those? Yeah, became? those those three um, living history performance pieces that I wrote. One of them is my Poena, which is about the um, overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy and the four days that lead up to the Queen yielding her authority to the United States. The second one is um, the trial of a Queen, which um, is. Uh, a living history program taken from the transcript of Lili Uokalani's actual trial in uh, 1895. And then the last one is the annexation debate, which, um, you know, covers the time that, the time period um, around annexation and leading up to annexation. And those three programs were actually created years ago. <laughs> um, the first one was, um, the My Poena show that you see today is a distillation of the Onipa Centennial pageant that I was asked to write on the 100th anniversary of the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy. So I took that material. We first did it in 1993. I took that material and I distilled it down into the, to the My Poena program that we do today. The second one, The Trial of the Queen, was written on the 100th anniversary of the Queen's trial. Um, Dallas Vogler f did the first version of it, which was way too long, and then I, I was working at the um, Judiciary History Center in Ali'i Lanihale. I was the education director there, so my um, supervisor at the time was really interested in doing another version of that because we were interpreting law, 
and that is one of the ten most important cases um, in Hawaiian history. So we redid the program then too. So that was another hundredth anniversary. Oh. And then um, the annexation debate was um, written for the hundredth anniversary of annexation. How much time is there in between the writing of each of those? Pardon my ignorance. Well, about 93 to 1890. That one was probably two, two years. And then the other one was more like four, okay. five. Yeah. All right. We need to take another quick break. Okay. We'll come back right there, enjoying the conversation. Okay. Um, and you stay put, because I know you're enjoying the conversation, too. We'll be right back with Victoria Nalani Nubel. Aloha. I'm Hunter Hevelin, host of Sustainable Hawaii here at Think Tech Hawaii. You can tune in every week on Thursday at 2 p.m. to see interviews with sustainability professionals from around the state and even further abroad, learning about activities with water management, food security, waste management, and a whole host of other uh, fascinating opportunities to get engaged with making a greener island. So if you're interested in making the transition from consuming individuals to communities of producers, check us out every Thursday. Aloha, my name is Paul Jackson, better known as PJ, and my local interest is in sports. I have my own sports radio show at KWAI AM 1080 that you can stream live. I also have my own website, pjsportsradio.com. We have live guests in studio, and we talk about discussions and topics that everyone wants to know locally here on the islands. We cover everything from surfing to basketball to whatever's going on locally, sports-wise. We try to do our best and cover the topics in depth as much as we can. Once again, thank you for joining PJ here on Hawaii Sports Update. Mahalo. Hi, we are back on center stage on the Think Tech Hawaii digital series. I'm Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. We're coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumukuhua Theater. I'm talking with Victoria Nalani Nubel, who is one of four playwrights, um, uh, writers of the show Ka'iolani, which premieres, uh, no, doesn't premiere. It opens at Kumukuhua Theater tomorrow night. The premiere was in 1987. 30 years ago. 30 years ago. <laughs> it's hard to believe the older I get, the, the shorter those distances seem to 30 years ago. It does not seem quite as long ago as mm. it well, you know, would have seemed 10 years ago. I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's go back to the annexation debate. Uh, Mapuina was the first one that you wrote. My Poena was the first one, yeah. And how did that come about? You were already right. This was not that long after you were in school. Um, 1993 was when I wrote the, um, you know, the Onipa Centennial pageant that became my Poena later on. And actually my Poena was um, created because um, of the statehood anniversary. And there was a Hawaiian group, the Hawaii Ponui Coalition, that wanted to remind people <laughs> you know, that this used to be another country. Mm -hmm. So they contacted me and asked me if they could do the Onipa Centennial pageant again. You know, and I said, oh, no, you don't want to do that. You know, it had 57 speaking roles in it, and, <laughs> and it went on for hours and hours and days. Well, it spread out over days. I said, but I, I'll write you something that um, is manageable and that, you know, we could do at the palace grounds, so. Oh, okay. That's how that happened. Yes. What it, so after you finished school, and what, what's your master's degree in? Drama and theater. In drama and theater. Yes. And then what did you do? I went to work in the museum field. I became a museum educator, so I was in charge of the educational programs for first for the Mission Houses Museum, then for the Ju uh, Kamehameha V Judiciary History Center, and the last historic site I worked at was the Manoa Heritage Center. And those last two sites, I actually wrote the interpretive plan for the site. I did all the research. I wrote the interpretive plan. I trained the guides. I developed the children's programs for those places, too. Oh, okay. So I had, had a day job. <laughs> you, had a, you had that day job, but you had yeah. uh, you. That explains a lot to me. You already yeah. had this feeling for history, and yeah. you, know, you were drawn to that. Yes. Well, 
It, what's fortunate is that my day job, you know, fed my artistic tastes. Yeah. So I was really lucky. <laughs> yeah, very nice yeah. marriage. And it probably yeah. made you excel. I, I bet you were a fabulous educator because of that. Well, it was fun. And they're still go. using some of my programs, you know, that I did years and years ago, oh, too. Wow. So, yeah, and some of my exhibits are still up there at the, at, in Ali'i Aleni Hale, so. Oh, that's very cool. That's got to feel yeah. pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I wrote training manuals a few years ago that I only hope, you know, last. Yeah. Um, okay, so you, so you started working at the museum and you were writing plays uh, mm. in your spare time? Yes, along with taking care of my two children and my husband. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And were you involved at Kumukahua? I was on the board of directors of Kumukahua Theater for about seven years. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes, so I was there when we were moving from place to place and, you know, building the sets and selling the tickets and acting in the place. Yeah. <laughs> We were a donkey board. <laughs> <laughs> it's still, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, in Kumu is still evolving. It, it, yeah. it, there, there are a lot of people who are still that involved in the productions yes. on our board, and we're making sure that we always have room for that, even though we need to be also a governance and fundraising board. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We're keeping that heart of it because that's the heart of what yeah. Kumu Kuhu is. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. Those were. It was wonderful to be part of building the theater. Yeah. I think I left the board right around the time we got this space here. Oh, so okay. it was great. It was great um, kind of closure for me being on the board to, you know, go from wandering around <laughs> to having a permanent home. That was yeah, yeah. Speaking of wandering around, around, I do want to make sure that we say that when Ka'iolani was first mounted in 1987, it toured Oahu. Yes. And it went to the uh, outer islands, yes. Maui, the big island, um, um, Kauai. Yep. D did it go to Lanai? Did it go that far? I don't know if it did or not. I, I, gosh, okay. I don't, that I don't remember. It, it, it toured and then it was brought back here and toured the Outer Islands and then went to the Fringe Festival in yes. Edinburgh and Washington, Washington DC and LA. And LA, that's right. That's the heart of it. That man to be yeah. able to bring that experience to people that's the next step as far as I'm concerned yeah um, uh, it, it's one thing I would like to see our plays produced everywhere I hope that you have plays produced in New Zealand very soon I hope so I yeah. you know, that, that is awesome to be able yeah. to bring um, and it, just as we did an exchange with New Zealand recently with Gary yeah. Cooper. We were hoping to reverse that. I <laughs> hope, <laughs> yeah, that would Take be great. Take one of our shows over there. Yeah. yeah, I did also once get a reading at the Public Theater in New York, so oh, that was wonderful. wonderful. A, a play that, you know, Kumu Kahua premiered, <laughs> The Conversion of Ka'umanas. That oh. was really great. Awesome. Yeah. That is, theater is a very safe way to bring messages to people yeah. that you they can experience not just read or yes you know it's not just one dimensional yeah yeah um so i, I do want to make sure and we're well, we're running out of time here you you some of the other plays that you've done at kumuku we've we've produced at kumuku theater holiday of rain um and malahua and alna evie Alana. Ola Naivi Olana. and Fanny and Bell too. Oh, and Fanny and Bell. What's yeah. Fanny and Bell about? Fanny and Bell is the story of Robert Louis Stevenson's wife and her daughter, Bell Strong. And so it's really a play about a mother-daughter relationship. Mm -hmm. They were fascinating people. And it's, um, it's, uh, I just say, you know, I was really taken with them they were bohemians and they were they were sort of um, so ahead of their time you know they were from the 19th century but their lives moved into the early 20th century but mm. they were strong they were independent they wandered all over the world <laughs> they took big risks and chances and, and they had a really interesting relationship so mm. and now I want to read that okay Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, 
do, when you're writing uh, something historical, mm -hmm. you, you're obviously taking mm -hmm. license. You don't uh, for something like uh, the annexation debate. You had transcripts, yeah. but when you're most of the time, you don't. Can you tell me a little bit about that? How that feels to take that license? Well, if I'm doing a living history program like my Poena or the Trial of the Queen or the annexation debate, I stay really as close as I can to real history. I try not to take too many liberties. Um, most of the time though, within a, you know, when you're covering a big framework of history, you need some kind of bridge. So sometimes I have a character that's, you know, not um, a historical, real historical person, but someone that can help to um, bridge the events together. And, and I don't like to take too many liberties there. When it's one of my plays that's written for the theater, um, I feel like that's the place where I get to um, use my own voice. I get to say whatever I want. I get to interpret things however I like. Mm -hmm. And so I, I make that distinction between those, those two kinds of writing for myself. I. Um, in a, in a play like Fanny and Belle that's really tied to real historical characters, I'm interpreting what I think is interesting about them, you know, and what I would like an audience to focus on and what um, I find fascinating about them. And so I, of course, I'm taking liberties and I'm making up things that they're saying. But um, I try not to, to go too far away from who they really, who I think they really were. I mean, everybody's going to see different things in historical characters. So I try not to get too far away. Okay. And I try and stay within a reasonable um, interpretive field because I would hate for somebody to come and go, oh, God, you know. She was never like that. Um, That's crazy. <laughs> you know, I just yeah. don't. And I don't like to change historical characters just for the sake of being edgy, which I know some writers do, but I, I don't like to do that. So um, I try to be careful, but at the same time, I want to give a doorway to my imagination, too. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a balancing act. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. I, um, well, and you are not just a playwright. You also have two, at least two novels out and a third on its way. Yes, my two mystery novels. <laughs> I just want to read really quickly this description of your first uh, Murder Casts a Shadow. <laughs> New Year's Eve, 1934, while Honolulu celebrates with champagne and fireworks, someone is m making away with the Bishop Museum's portrait of King Kalakaua and its curator. A series of brutal murders follows, and an <laughs> unlikely pair, newspaper reporter Mina Beckwith and visiting playwright, visiting playwright Ned um, Manusia, yep. yeah, Manusia, find themselves investigating a twisted trail of clues in an attempt to recover the painting and uncover the killer. Now, when I saw that, and that was just today, I did not know this about you. I thought, oh my god, there's this whole other layer of this woman. How fascinating. Well, I... I um I wanted to write a novel. I started two novels, and, and then I took this graduate seminar that Ian McMillan very kindly let me sit in on at the university. And then I realized, gosh, you know, I need to finish one of those. So I picked the mystery. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually finished it. You know, I, it, when you're writing a novel for the first time, you really want to know whether you can finish it or not. It's much longer than a Where play. Where are you going to go? Yeah, yeah, so I finished it, and I actually got a publisher. The UH Press published it, and then... It's available on Amazon now. Yeah. Well, and that finishes our interview. Oh. Thank you so much. The oh, time you're so has welcome. absolutely flown, flown by. by. I'm anxious to see the show tonight. I'm watching the preview. Oh, great. And uh, I hope that you will come and, and see the show, and uh, the, the work is stirring, I can promise you that reading it will stirs your soul I'm anxious to watch it so hopefully we will see you there I would like to thank a few people here I would like to thank Zuri Bender our production manager who is in my ear I would like to thank our floor manager Sachi Slomov who's right over there thank Hello. you
and Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put it all together. Thank you so much, Vicki. Thank you. We'll see you next week.